I've been an agent for over 25 years. I've never seen a situation where there are so many players out of contract in mm. the summer. Now, normally, players that are out of contract are players that are not want either wanted by the club or past, past the sell-by date. We've got top players like Mbappe and, and n numerous players. Pogba is only 28. You've got players at 25 to, to 30 out of contract. I reckon there's about 1.5 billion at least going to go out of the, the club's coffers if all of these players go on free transfers. Is there, money, is there money for that? Do you think in the game still? I think there's a bit of a dilemma at the moment because I, I think wages have peaked, players are coming to the end of their contracts, clubs are offering players contracts, and no matter how much their value is, mm. the clubs are saying, no, financial fair play, we've got, we've got to hold still. If you look at Osman Dem Dembele, Barcelona, they paid 135 million for him. Yeah. And now he's going out of contract. And now the club have said that if he doesn't sign a new contract on reduced money, they're just going to let him go. It's, it's, it's an incredible situation. Never mind Kylian Mbappe, mm. who could be the first player in history to get, he could get 100 million signing on fee, this guy, because he's worth 200 million. If he gets 100 million signing on, it's a good deal for, for a club. But PSG have, have got the money to say to him, hang on a minute, you're staying here. If you, if, if, you were, if you were in the playground and you had all of these free agents in front of you, <laughs> and as an agent, you yeah. could pick one, yeah. which one would you want to pick and why? Well, obviously Mbappe, but that's too obvious. So I'd go with um, Frank Kessie at, at Milan. He's a phenomenal number six. Mm. When people talk about Kante, I think that Kessie's probably the best in the world at what he does, breaks up play. And there are certain clubs, I won't name them, but Man United need a player <laughs> like him. In the middle of the park. In 25 years of age, how significant is the, the age of the player when you look at these, these three agents? It's incredible. I mean, look, you've got people are not even speaking of people, people like Dybala, you know. Mm. Um, there are so many good young players. I don't really want to mention this club, but Chelsea. Right? Chelsea have got two very good centre-backs who are both going to be out of contract in the summer. But, you know, they're smart operators. I would expect both of them to re-sign. How much of it, this is down to agents? Is it people like you more and more saying to these players, look, hold on, don't sign a new contract at your club. Wait till you are free because I can get you a much better deal. And the money that the buying club would have spent on a transfer, maybe that will end up coming to me and you. And we can share that yeah. instead of the club getting it. Yeah, it was all friendly till Carve stepped in. <laughs> How much of it has to do with the agents? Yeah. Bad people. Um, in the rear. Do, do, do you know what? It's, um, obviously, I've been involved in a few uh, free transfer situations. And it's not as easy as what people think. You know, if a player is free in the summer and they got injured now, then that's gone. That's, that's, that's up in smoke. So it's a balance between do we, do we sign now or do we wait until the summer? But a lot of it is to do with the clubs, what the clubs want to do. Clubs have got the power to make any player sign a contract. A club with substantial financial power can say to a player, you don't have to go in the summer, we want you here now, here's a contract. Those negotiations can be done. So people always think that agents have got power or players have got power. <laughs> Clubs have the power. In a situation like this, an agent can advise a player, but it depends on what the situation is between the player and the agent. Mm. The agent might have a contract running out. The agent might want the deal to be done now. You, you touched on it there. One of the other themes I've noticed as well is it's a pre-contract. Because whenever we talk about players in the final six months, the first thing we say is they can sign a pre-contract with a club outside their own country. And they never do. Yeah, it, how big a gamble is that, though? Yeah. It's funny, this pre-contract situation, for some reason, players and agents don't seem to do it very often. Because once you sign a pre-contract... How can you then stay at the club? Um, the, the only one I've seen like that was Ramsey, really, where Arsenal were a classy outfit. Arsenal said to, to him, OK, you've signed a pre-contract, we're still going to play you. Some clubs would be like, well, we're not playing you. Um, there, there might be a bit of anim animosity in the situation. So uh, 
It's not as easy as what people think to be on a free con uh, contract in the summer. Yeah, I think it's I, happened to Rangers recently. Is it John Suter have gone from Hearts to Rangers yeah. up in up in Scotland? The, the big one was though when you when you talked about that is the Kylian Mbappe situation. There was there was a lot of talk that he could sign a pre-contract agreement with Real Madrid. Yeah. But that's almost become impossible now simply because they're playing each other in the Champions League, and it's just not a good look, is it? Well, here, here's the thing. Um, it's a bit of a game. You know, it's a bit of cat and mouse, these negotiations. So, if all of a sudden Mbappe signs a pre-contract, the game's over for him. He, him and his people, they don't know what PSG can come with. Remember, PSG are the people that knocked on Barcelona's door and said, here's a cheque for 200 million for, for Neymar. <laughs> so, PSG can do whatever they want. You, you mentioned... You mentioned um... Something that happened in the past. You're going to be nice, Carvey. Yeah, no, no, I'm not going <laughs> agents on. He's bringing out his entire record of deals. Uh, obviously, you were involved with Sol Campbell yeah. moving uh, to Arsenal. How difficult a situation was that to manage? And ha how many other options did he have? And was he ever close to signing a contract at Spurs? Look, if a player at that time, there wasn't other players in their peak that were going to be available on free transfer. Now, there are numerous. But at that time, well, there wasn't any. He was in his peak. He was one of the best defenders in the world. Every club, every club in the world wanted to sign him. So it was very difficult. But I think the danger for clubs is if a player is happy at a club. I know it sounds ironic. Kylian Mbappe is not sitting at home crying in his soup. He's <laughs> at PSG and he's earning good money. So it isn't a big deal for him to move. Players that are really unhappy and don't like the situation, they're the ones that might say, do you know what, I just want to go now. Just on the Sol Campbell situation, it, it came as a surprise to everyone. It's one of those rare deals that nobody really knew about until Arsene Wenger and Sol Campbell appeared yeah. at this news conference. Could you give us an idea when, when that deal got done and yeah. when did Tottenham know he was going to go to Arsenal? It's not my business to find out when, when Tottenham knew. <laughs> what, what, what I can say to you is that right up until the night before, we weren't sure it was going to happen. I think that... Um, Where else could he have gone the night, the night before? I don't know. There, there's a nice, no, there's a nice Italian restaurant in <laughs> Mayfair you can go to. Um, <laughs> right up until the point where... Um, look, a, a hard decision like that, you can't really make it, yeah? So... We didn't make it. Barcelona were leading the market for him. Inter Milan, uh, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich. So you, you can't really make that decision. But my job was to close the noise and let him make a decision based on football. The hardest thing in this game, well, it's two things. There's confidentiality and there's players being allowed to make a decision. Mm. Nine times out of ten, players don't make their own decision. They're influenced by people. They're influenced by ages, they're influenced by family, they're influenced by clubs. I didn't allow that to happen to him. So were Arsenal at that point financially on a par with the, the best in Europe? No. No? No, no. Nowhere near Barcelona and Madrid. So that was an emotional decision? No, it was a decision based on football. Mm. Even Arsene Wenger said you should make um, decisions based on hate. Um, maybe uh, I was... Mm, not been in the game that long, so I was like, well, what do you mean? You, you've got to make a decision based on football. Whereas now, there are so many people involved in deals, there's so much pressure, there's social media, that people can influence you. But ultimately, you have to make a decision for yourself and for football. You look at as many players in football now that are looking at the situation and thinking, mm, I've made a mistake here. Mm. Or ambition is to win things and to fulfil your potential. That's the bottom line. You have to fulfil your potential. Looking ahead to this summer, do you think any of these players who are out of contract will end up staying at the clubs they're at at the moment? Or is the potential sort of jackpot on offer too tempting to just... It, that's a really good question. ...run down your contract and move? Or could you see somebody like Paul Pogba, for instance, sign a new Man United contract? Or Antonio Rudiger sign a new Chelsea contract? Or are they basically gone in the summer? That's a really good question. If you get injured, that almost makes you feel like, mm, I don't have to do anything. Or it might make you feel like, I better sign a contract for security. Again, depends on the people around you. But once we go past January, those players that are out of contract, certain of them will act in different ways. 
Some of them will think, well, January's gone. Remember, a lot of them are thinking, I might go in January. Mm. January goes, then they're thinking, OK, the ones that want security will say, right, I want to sign a contract. The ones that are really strong mentally, and you have to be strong mentally, will say, I'm going to play this season out. But remember, imagine Carve. You've got six months left on your contract. I know it's difficult to imagine, but I want you to put yourself there. <laughs> a lot of interest. Right? <laughs> OK, so you're thinking, if I get injured, the deal's off. If I get injured, I lose my... So that actually stops you from playing 110%. Or it can. How, how do you assess the Erling Haaland situation? Release clause of 75 million euros this summer at Borussia Dortmund. What do you expect to happen there? Well, um, he, he went on tour with um, Robbie Williams, I think, didn't he? Uh, really? Erling Haaland. Well, he, he went on tour. And... Uh, <laughs> Oh, around you, uh, around Europe. Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll so, wait for you to get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No we got problem. it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so he went on tour. Now, clubs are waking up to to Meany's tricks, right? Mm. Reen is a good operator, but that was a bit too blatant. So now, what happens with clubs is that some of them just think, right, we're not getting involved in a Dutch auction. Mm. One or two will pull out because they know that the buyout clause might be seventy-five, but Clubs might start offering more than 75. So in, in the summer, I expect him to go, but it's n he's not as, he's not going to be as sought after as what people think. Could, could some players end up getting reduced contracts that gamble this summer to go to the end of their contracts? You mentioned Mbappe. Could Real Madrid pay him as much as PSG? Do you know, 100. That's what, that's what's happening now. So clubs have reached their point of financial fair play. Players are coming out of contract. So what clubs are saying to players now, as what Barcelona have said to Dembele, you have to take a reduced amount of money. And so players, rightly or wrongly, think, I'm not taking a reduced um, contract. I'm, at, I'm, I'm out in the summer. And agents are telling them stuff that may put a tint on the situation. Some players will find themselves in a situation where they're getting much less because the money just isn't there to give all of these players the same money or more. Just to confirm, £1.5 billion in the summer, potentially, you think, though? I think, I think, round about that, well, I made some notes and I looked at all the value of all the players, roughly, and £1.5 if, if clubs lost £1.5 billion, it will affect the transfer market. Mm. Darmish and Carver are going to be a busy summer for you, Jen, so pace yourself. Sky, Andrew, it's been a pleasure having you on. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much.